Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my uh, brand new Facebook live stream. Because uh, you may not be aware, if you haven't read my post yesterday, that uh, I'm going to overhaul the entire live stream thing. So each day we're going to have a different theme, different things to talk about. Uh, instead of just purely just photography and things like that, I just want to broaden uh, you know, a lot of the different topics. Maybe you know some, some of you may be interested, some of you may not, then you can tune in from another time and whatsoever. So it's going to be fun. It's, hopefully it's going to be interesting for everybody. And uh, yeah, because I do have a lot of stuff to show you guys uh, uh, in the future. It, not just about cameras and lenses, but also other gears uh, or supporting accessories, so to speak. Uh, and also from different industries as well. So I might as well uh, use this opportunity opportunity to open the window and let you guys in and let's have a look at it together. So today is the Photography News Tuesday. Yes. So what this is that basically means that every Tuesday I'm going to round up a lot of the news that uh, uh, are happening in the photography world uh, and going to share it uh, in this particular stream every Tuesday. So I'm going to just bring you some of the attention that, uh, you know, some of the latest stuff, what's going on, uh, um, uh, you know, in the tech technologies uh, uh, sectors within the community of photography and videography. So, you know, some of you may be interested. So let's say some hi and good morning to my regulars, of course. Good morning, Kelvin, and good morning, Mark and Robin. Fantastic. I love to see all these people here. That's great, right? Right. Okay. So let me um, uh, uh, round up a couple of important ones as well. I mean, you've seen my post, the title is about, uh, first of all, it's Sharp, the 8K camera. Well, this is not new because uh, it, they actually talked about it last year in 2019. They already uh, talked about the, uh, the forthcoming 8K video cameras. But what excites me or excites a lot of the uh, Michael Four Third uh, photographers and filmmakers is that, um, the, is this a Michael Four Third sensor camera? and also using Michael Fawcett mount, of course. Uh, so that's exciting, right? You know why? Because as you know that within the, uh, the Michael Fawcett world, we have kind of uh, stuck with the 20 megapixel sensor for quite a number of years now. Um, we haven't propelled further, not because I need it, but uh, uh, you know, a lot of people always wanted something slightly bigger so they can compete with you know, other high resolution counterparts, whether they're going to be uh, APS-C or full frame, um, because it is moving that direction. And to, to be quite honest, if you need something higher than 4K, you will need to go past a certain level of megapixel. So to be precise, if you want an 8K uh, video capable cameras, you will need a 33 megapixel sensor. And that is what Sharp is going to produce, or well, at least minimum of that, because it is an 8K video. In, at the end of the day, right? So um, just, this is exciting. So this is, will be the first uh, uh, Michael Four Third camera sensors that is capable of out resolving the current 20 or breaking the barrier of 20 megapixels that we have been using for the last four to five years. So this is something that I believe it would be a breakthrough especially for this particular platform. And, uh, but ha unfortunately after the news was announced last year and it's kind of gone all gone quiet uh, like really quiet and uh, Sharp didn't say anything further. There was no pictures, there was no specification and simply nothing. But last, last week and all of a sudden, and uh, they put the first <laughs> kind of mock-up photo of, the, uh, of their forthcoming 8K uh, video camera um, in the website. So I'm going to share that uh, with you guys uh, uh, from the Sharp website in Japan. Of course, everything in Japanese, but hopefully you will be able to see it. So uh, let me just uh, go into it and, and we're going to continue talking about it, right? Okay, let's get rid of this photography news here and we're going to continue with this. So let's do this right now. Hopefully you can see it. And um, Oops, what happened there? Yeah, right. Okay, there, there you go. And uh, Okay, so let's see there. Can you guys see everything? Okay. Right. Okay. This is the uh, Sharp Japanese website. As you can see that uh, uh, you can see they have a whole bunch of 8K compatible product. With uh, it's going to be TV uh, broadcasting uh, equipments and also uh, you know very high end. Uh, uh, cinema cameras and broadcasting cameras. So these are their current, uh, 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 you know, investments into this particular platform, the 8K platform now. Um, so they're looking way ahead of, uh, you know, the game uh, like anybody else at the moment, because this would consider to be the future of televisions or videography. So uh, let's see, let me just scroll down a little bit and you can see that at the moment you have all this stuff here, which is uh, the, the 8K uh, TV 70 inch and then uh, the, this is the receiver apparently, the 8K receiver, and the 
what they say that in the Chinese word, or Japanese word is that uh, the first three character means that it's commercial or professional. So this is the professional 8K video that already produced for use uh, in a commercial environment. This is whether it's for filmmaking, uh, uh, Hollywood productions or big budget production, you know, something that requires ultra high definition. And uh, so this would be what they have at the moment. But what this is about now is this at the bottom. This is the consumer stuff, right? Here, here you got the uh, you got the uh, obviously the new 8K capable uh, uh, mobile phone, similar to uh, uh, what Samsung is doing at the moment, and then they have this uh, uh, 5G transmitter, you know, and which are capable of uh, transmitting 8K video signals, and of course the uh, 8K uh, uh, satellite transmitter transmitter. But this is coming up now. There we go. This is the 8K Micro Four Third camera. It doesn't really quite say it at the moment, but you know that it is because it has a Olympus 12 to 100 millimeters f4 Pro lens on it, <laughs> uh, which is actually pretty cool, right? Well, this is obviously a C it's a CG uh, uh, image, but this is what the uh, uh, 8K video cameras potentially is going to look like. And uh, to be quite frank, I think they already probably mocked something up that's probably working prototype um, uh, uh, from, from what I understand. So this could be exciting for the entire uh, uh, Micro Four Third community because this is the first ever 33 megapixel or minimum of 33 megapixel capable sensor within this system. Okay, a lot of you guys may not be into filmmaking or, or 8K video recording, but the, the thing is about the megapixel side of it, uh, even though I t say time and time again about it, I don't need more than 20, 24 megapixel, but it's just like what I mentioned before as well, that uh, uh, I like to see boundaries being pushed you know, further. You know, this is a technology at the end of the day, so we want to see uh, more things happening and uh, uh, that we are seeing the future of you know, a platform, which is always a good news, right? So, and this will be the very, very first uh, uh, evidence of that the Micro Four Third is not just stuck at that 20 megapixel. It's not just stuck at current technologies. You know, things are definitely moving ahead. But at this moment in time, and uh, we do not know, or nobody knows up, uh, outside of Sharp uh, or other people that who are involving in this particular development knows that whether this sensor is in-house developed by Sharp it themselves or going to be made by somebody else, whether it's going to be Sony, you know, other big uh, sensor uh, manufacturers currently in the world, nobody knows. But all we know is that is if they are able to produce an 8K uh, video camera, that means that they will have to have a minimum, a minimum of 33 megapixels. So this is exciting. This is definitely exciting. And because they've gone quiet for almost a year and suddenly they put that back into the website, that means something. Now, that means that they might have made progress into the development. And that means that we may be able to see something or at least hear the announcement uh, it could be as soon as sometime the, towards the end part of the quarter four this year or maybe even early 2021. You never know. But this is certainly exciting because 8K video cameras, whether you like it or not, is coming. First of all is the uh, 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 you know, Canon, new Canon R system is going to be 8K capable uh, and, uh, and also any other uh, manufacturer definitely are going to follow suit where Panasonic is going to be probably next and, uh, and so for the others. We definitely don't need 8K for most people now, you know, it would be ma ma mainly for a lot of the high value production houses, uh, filmmakers uh, that would utilize the AK. I know people would call, you know, counter argue just like high, make uh, high megapixel cameras that you can always crop. That's true. If that's what you want, you know, you can basically film in 8K and still crop into a 4K uh, uh, eclipse if you wish and still maintain a high degree of quality uh, and sharpness and details. Uh, that is very, very true if you really want to get into that. But I think for majority of the people there, an AK will be an overkill. Uh, and also, you know, none of us really, you know, I would probably comfortably say that 99.999% of the public won't have an AK uh, TV. I only just literally bought my 4K TV and uh, after using my 10, 1080 4 HD for like a number of years. Uh, so like I'm just adopting to the 4K visual so to speak, although I film 4K, and, uh, and, uh, but it isn't something I have been enjoying for the past best part of six, seven years since 4K became, became a normality in our consumer world. Uh, so this is definitely something quite uh, uh, interesting. Um, but like I said, uh, my current workflow 
at the moment doesn't cater for anything all uh, over 4K. My computer definitely can't handle it. You know, I will have to invest a lot, a lot of money uh, to have a uh, super high-end graphics card processors uh, and so forth, you know, to be able to take advantage of the 4K editing. Um, you can record it, everybody can record something, right? You know, but when it comes to editing it, it's going to be something else. And I can guarantee that. Uh, uh, people may not actually fully appreciate it until you start to work on those files. Uh, similarly, in, if you have a 80, 100 megapixel uh, image file, a raw file, trying to throw into Lightroom and starting to work with it, it, it will be a struggle, you know, like it's not going to be as snappy as what you are doing with the 20, 24, maybe even 30 megapixels. But once you bump it up to 80 or 100, yeah, it takes time and you see it and you see the delay there. It's not going to be as snappy unless you have obviously a high end computer once again. So it's all depending on the subsequent uh, 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 um, uh, uh, equipment that you have and the back end to, uh, to handle those uh, files that you produce, uh, that you capture, whether it's going to be videos or photos. So that is something that you will have to dig deep to, uh, to make sure that you have all the supportive equipment for everything that you capture in such a high resolution of big files uh, in the future. But of course, I'm taking my time at the moment. Uh, I think 4K is definitely more than sufficient for what I use in even in commercial environments for my clients. I mean, they even they, a lot of my clients still ask for 4HD files, even though I record in 4K. So I actually upload uh, 1080 files, so they don't need 4K uh, because a lot of them are actually using for their web developments, web promotions, and they don't need 4K files for that. And uh, similarly. The, uh, some of my commercial clients who just see me uh, ask me to do some uh, photography for their portfolios, uh, they don't need 50 megapixels because a lot of their portfolio being viewed on iPads and also on the uh, uh, on online on the on the websites and things like that so they don't need ultra high resolutions and that's a fact that's what i'm saying keep saying um to many of you that if you don't understand your usage about uh, your camera your tools these are your tools ultimately if you work in a commercial environment you really are more likely to be dictated by your customers requirements if majority of my work are going to be uh, 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 online productions that means that um, my, everything that I have, even my 20 megapixels uh, uh, Olympus and 4K cameras is way overkill for everything that I produce. And, and that's the fact, you know, I don't think I'm worried too much uh, uh, about, you know, what I have at the moment. I don't need anything more than 20 or 4K uh, 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 for that matter. So like, but having seen this, it definitely excites me because I know that, you know, there is a future for Micro Four Third platform. There's a future for uh, higher tech to uh, to come within the Micro Four Third world. So this is definitely definitely exciting. So um, let's before I move on to the next news, uh, let's have a look at what you guys think about it as well. So uh, oh, quite a few people joined in as well. Good morning, Terry, and good morning, Peter, and morning, Brad. Oh, you're back from holiday, or you're still on holiday, just tuning in. <laughs> um, good afternoon, Burana. So Terry said we would need much better lenses and even at f4 diffraction is going to start to degrade the IQ at 33 megapixel. Um, possibly, very possible, but I cannot answer you because uh, at this moment in time, I don't think anyone has done a definitive lens test uh, on the on the micro four third lenses, uh, how much uh, details and they can resolve. So I don't no, uh, at this moment in time, whether any of these lenses will be uh, uh, compatible with the 33 megapixel sensor. I know, but I do know a fact that some of the pro lenses that we have in the Olympus definitely are resolved the 20 megapixel, that's for sure. And, uh, so it will be interesting to see uh, how many of them can go up to 33, uh, but it would be the same for any manufacturers. And that's a fact, you know, like whether it's gonna be Canon, Nikon, you know, if they're all gonna be venturing into the AK uh, stuff, it's going to be very, very different to what they have currently. And uh, I, I know the cat, that's why Canon keep updating the lenses and uh, because they are bringing more higher and higher resolutions for both photos and videos. So uh, that's why they keep upgrading it and uh, to make sure that they, they are future proofing you know, uh, themselves for their latest developments. So it will be good to see uh, uh, that. And that's also another reason why this could potentially push the Micro Four Third forward. And this is what we need as a technology, you know, as a, uh, a platform because you know i keep saying that i'm happy uh, where i am at the moment but i know a lot of you guys are probably worried about the future of Micro Four Third. but this is definitely one big good evidence that you know we are moving in the right directions and that will push other things to develop you know when someone is capable of producing a high resolution sensor and that means that everything have to move up right everything 
because Sharp doesn't produce lenses, and Sharp relying on other uh, 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 lens manufacturers. So that's good uh, because it's a micro four third platform. So they're going to be using Sigma, uh, uh, Tamron, um, Olympus, Panasonic, and all the other lenses, uh, all the other manufacturers that make micro four third lenses. So this is definitely something that I'm 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 super excited about you know I, I, I got really hyped up last year when I saw the 8k stuff and then and then really all of a sudden it kind of disappear in it, behind the clouds and something like that it just gone and then of course of course in all this news that happened lately doesn't help either but this suddenly resurfaced and really give me a, a very uh, a good positive outlook about the entire platform on the cell so this is definitely something encouraging um, now let's see any other things here. And uh, <laughs> my TV still isn't 4HD yet. <laughs> like I said, you know, my TV. You know, I literally just got my 4K TV uh, since I moved into the, uh, to my new house here. Uh, before that, I I, I was the, uh, I was having the uh, the 4HD uh, TV for a good number of years. I still using the old LCD technologies. That's how old it was. It was about 18 years old, I think. No, not 18. That, that's too long. Maybe 15 years old. So it was quite a while ago. And uh, so I'm I'm. I'm quite enjoying my 4K now. I don't want to upgrade to any 8K for another 10 years. <laughs> you know, because I, I don't like to change uh, TVs at all. You know, like if I'm happy with one, I'll probably just start with it until it breaks, basically. And, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm not ready for 8K, <laughs> but I'm happy about the 8K in a way. So that's quite interesting. Um, if Jimmy goes 8K for his video, he will have uh, to hire a makeup artist. Oh, you are so naughty, Mark. You're so naughty. You know what? Um, I, I look pretty good for my age, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's another thing about these uh, ultra ultra high. I mean, actually, how are we going to call 8K now? You know, like remember when we have uh, 1080, which is called well. So let's go back now. We have standard definition, which is 480. Then we have the uh, 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 high definition, not 4 HD, uh, HD, which is 720. Then we have the uh, full HD, which is FHD. For 1080, then we have Ultra 4, uh, so 4K, which is UHD, Ultra High Definition. So how are they going to call 8K? At the moment, I haven't seen like they have a word for it. They just say 8K. So are they going to call it Ultra Ultra High Definition, like UUHD? It's going to be really weird, right? And uh, I don't know. But anyway, let's go back to this makeup artist thing. I think it's interesting because um, I remember when they first switched everything to 4K, and a lot of the TV uh, television stars they were worried about the, the showing the imperfection of their faces, <laughs> and that's true. And you can really clearly see that, especially if you go to cinema. You, know, you see all this uh, gigantic screen. You really do see all the details popping out. And imagine for 8K, you know, like you're going to see even more detail. Uh, but then again, you have to go back to the uh, uh, kind of like the logical argument about higher megapixel uh, still cameras and the videos. When you look at something on a on a fixed canvas, a fixed size canvas, do you really physically can see much more detail? Uh, uh, let's say you have a 50 inch TV. Let's let's for arguments, you have a 50 inch TV. You will see the difference between Full HD and 4K, yeah, because it's four times the resolution and you will see the difference. But what about the same 50 inch canvas switching from 4K to 8K? I doubt it very much you will see actually that much more detail on the 50 inch canvas. You will see it when it's 80 inch, maybe even 100 inch. So that that's can go back to the same uh, 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 kind of a discussion about if you print a photo, let's say you have a uh, uh, 10 by 14, uh, 7 by 5, uh, uh, even like, you know, if you use A sizes, A3, A1 sizes, you may not actually notice the difference between a 20 and 30 megapixel when you print on that sort of sizes of print. When you come to a wall size, let's say you're going to have 100 by 400 inches, and that's maybe different now because, uh, yeah, yeah, this 20 megapixel will definitely show its weakness, and you will need the 80 or 100 megapixels to see the extra details, make it just looks a little bit crispier, and that's true. So that it really depends on how big the canvas is at the end of the day, whether whether you have that space to enjoy the extra detail. If not, you probably won't be able to see it. And similar on the phone as well. You know, people are arguing. You know, some of the iPhones are not uh, 4K uh, uh, screen. They are not 4K. I know Samsungs and some of the Android phones are 4K. But can your eyes physically physically tell the pixels? I mean, I can't even tell in these pixels. I can't even see dots in it anymore. You know, so this is exactly the same argument about how much can you see, you know, physically, you know, in, in terms of definitions. And so, like, you come to a point that you probably won't be able to see the difference. And in that case, 
is an overkill or just over the top of what uh, uh, you can actually interpret. So I think um, um, we, we shall see what, you know, what the world is going to say and how the world is going to evolve. But I, we, all we know that AK will, will come one, uh, you know, one day, whether it's going to be soon or later, it doesn't matter, but it will come one day. So, uh, but that's the future. And, when, and now we are definitely looking at future now. So Terry, I reckon the F300 F4 will be up for the task, I'm sure. And I'm pretty sure that's actually true. And uh, uh, Terry, I think the 300 f4 is an extremely sharp lens. So is the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro lens. It's actually a very, very sharp lens. Uh, actually, in, as a matter of fact, most of the Pro lenses are, including the 17 uh, millimeters 1.2, uh, may not be wide open at 1.2. I think that's probably reaching the limit of 20 to 24 megapixel. And then, uh, but the 45 would definitely resolve more power, uh, so more 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 pixels. Uh, so this. This is interesting. I think it will be interesting to see the, the development of the lenses uh, and also the sensor as well. So, uh, and heart. Yongna M43 hybrid phone. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I heard about that as well. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be an interesting thing, you know. And I think people did try it before. And in fact, if you look at the Leica a TL, you know, it's almost, almost like a phone because it has no physical button at the back of the phone, or in fact, any anywhere apart from the shutter button. So it mainly rely on the giant big flat screen at the back of the camera and uh, to control everything. Um, it's almost. A kind of like a hybrid phone camera anyway so to speak just hasn't got the sim card in it so it doesn't really make calls but uh, but it has in effect it is really almost that anyway so um, it will be interesting to see that but I don't think I would buy into it I still prefer physical button dial I mean I'm I'm still a photographer I'm not a gimmicky guy I'm not a tech guy I'm not really uh, a, a, a kind of I would say the ultimate iPhone creators. I mean, even though I use iPhone to create movies and stuff like that, I work with iPhone companies and to do uh, creative stuff, but I'm not just using iPhone. So uh, I don't think I will be able to use just the screen. And then um, I still much having prefer the you know more tactile buttons and dials and things like that. So that would be an interesting thing to see whether the world would, would accept this type of phones and uh, 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 cameras uh, uh, for that matter. So it will be interesting. And uh, ultra extra mega HD. That's what you're gonna call the 8K. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be interesting, right? Okay, let's let's move on to the next news now. Okay, the uh, the next news I want to talk about is uh, a three thousand uh, dollars rangefinder cameras that doesn't have a screen, which is not unheard of because uh, uh, you know Leica actually produced one, you know, a few years ago, and they're still producing one. And, uh, which is a, a traditional like an M camera, a digital M camera without a screen, and they still have that. So, uh, so I'm not surprised that some other people might tap into the same market. It's a niche market, but it's it's aiming for the more like the very kind of pure diehard uh, uh, photographer who doesn't like to shoot digital, but they want the convenience of digital, yet they don't want to feel digital kind of thing. And uh, you know what's why that that particular M camera is selling quite well actually for Leica. So um, now another company in France has done an exact camera like that. It's called the Pixie. So I'm going to show you again the uh, the news about that particular news. So there we go. Oh, I need to change the uh, the actual uh, uh, the web page. Uh, that you can see it. Right there we go. This is the Pixie camera, right? So. You can see it looks exactly like a uh, like a range camera, apart from subtle differences in terms of the the shape itself. But the form factor, the look of it, is exactly like a normal range finder camera, right? It's an M mount as well, so you can actually use your Leica cameras uh, uh, lenses for this particular camera. Um, but you know, if you look at it, it 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 really really reminds you of the uh, the older. Uh, the uh, what was it? The Konica, the Konica, the Konica rangefinder. It, it has a similar sort of aesthetic to it. Uh, the, I I personally like the uh, the Konica Hexa. You have to remember the name is called Hexa. Yeah, they they are really cool rangefinder cameras back in the uh, in the nineties, uh, eight uh, yeah, nineties, uh, which is actually a fun camera to use. They use M mount lenses as well. Of course, it's a film camera, so you can use all types of. Uh, um, uh, uh, currently available ambulances on that particular body. They still you can still find them online. They're relatively uh, uh, affordable compared to Leica. They're still expensive, but compared to Leica, they're relatively expensive. Uh, sorry, 
less uh, uh, expensive and very much affordable by that uh, in that sense. But if you look at the aesthetics, very, very similar to that. It has a optical viewfinder on one side and uh, it's a typical optical rangefinder uh, 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 instead of uh, having this uh, latest Leica M LED uh, frame, uh, the, the actual viewing frame. So which is actually I prefer. So interesting stuff. As you look at the, the all size of it, is uh, I, I like the digital uh, display on top of it. It's definitely making it more modern compared to the very traditional approach of the Leica M, which is uh, has no digital screen anywhere on the body apart from the back screen, LCD screen, and the uh, the the Modal is nothing on it. It's just a very pure, clean aesthetic. Nothing uh, to be uh, you know you can see it. So when you turn the dial, obviously the digital display would change. The numbers would tell you exactly what setting you are in terms of shutter speed, uh, because it's a rangefinder. Uh, the aperture is on the lens, so you don't need the screen to tell you exactly what it is. So the screen basically only tell you the, uh, the ISO, the exposures, whether you, which mode you're on, aperture priority or not, shutter speed, and um, battery level, and all the other little details and things like that. So it's a very purest camera. But at that price, you know, you're gonna make you wonder whether you want to get this or the Leica M. I know it's still cheaper uh, than the Leica M. And another thing is that this is not a full frame camera. This is only a, uh, an APS-C camera. And not only that, yeah, you know, uh, just another thing you w want to know about is that this particular camera is not anything high resolution, as you may imagine, in 2020. Uh, funny enough, the, uh, the, uh, the Pixie cameras uh, actually doesn't give you the exact uh, megapixels, yeah? And let me just go back to that website so you can actually see. So, um, okay. And if you see the specification here, Okay, you can see that, uh, let's go to the uh, frame lines. Okay, no, you can see the sensor here. It doesn't give you what sort of uh, definite, uh, sorry, uh, a resolution you're getting. It says how many pixels per inch. Well, based on that calculation, you are actually getting 11 megapixel, round about 11 megapixels. So this is actually a very, very low resolution camera. But what's Interesting is though, it's one of the first cameras that I see using a global electronic shutter. So it hasn't got a, uh, a proper uh, uh, physical uh, leaf shutters in it, and uh, which is actually quite interesting because it's global electronic shutter, that means there will be no uh, rolling, uh, rolling effect. That would be cool. It will be like uh, the first I've seen in this sort of cameras. And uh, it has a 12 bit sample rating. And it, which means it's probably got a fairly high dynamic range in it, which is not surprising given it is a 11 megapixel camera and it has a native ISO of 320, which is about the same as a Leica. Leica, uh, Leica is about 200, which is the, uh, the native for color and 400 for the black and white version. So uh, it's very, very, very similar in that sense. And there's no, no low pass filter. And so as usual, none of the M cameras have low pass filter. So that means you will get very crisp detail. But it, it's, it's you know, it's interesting that they go for this particular sensor and I can see that they want to aim for the tech. They want to definitely want to aim for the tech. And people who want to buy these sort of purest cameras would definitely appreciate definite, uh, the resolution is not everything. And I think that they really want to capture the, the ultimate uh, quality that really mimic the, uh, the, uh, the analog uh, 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 photography. So this particular sensor as, an, as a 11 megapixel, ultra high dynamic range, a global shutter sensor would definitely make sense, you know. So they're going against the flow, trying something completely new into the market. And uh, I am actually finding it quite interesting. But would I pay three grand for it? Probably no. You know, not until I actually see what it can produce. And uh, so it's, it's going to be really uh, unusual, you know, and uh, for, uh, I know, the, you can see that from the website, this particular camera already sold out because they're pre-ordering it. You can still order the, uh, the what they call the launch edition because the, there are two versions of this camera in the website. There's the normal version, which has an internal eight gigabyte memory. So you can actually shoot without a memory card or you can buy the launch edition, which is 200 uh, euro less, but it gives you four gigabyte of internal memory instead of eight, but everything else is the same. And uh, so you can still order the launch edition if you really want to. Uh, but don't forget, yeah, there are two things that I just mentioned. You get a low resolution, a completely new sensor type that you haven't seen or heard before. And then you, uh, it's an APS-C sensor, not a full frame. So that means everything you've 
slap onto this cam will have to be magnified by 1.5 or 1.6. They haven't even actually mentioned that. So uh, I don't know what the crop factor is. So your 35 millimeters traditional wide angle lens for street photography will suddenly become a standard lens on this particular camera. So you have to invest even more money because you know in Leica terms, Anything wider than 24, if you want some luxes, they will be extremely expensive. A 24 1.4 will cost you about, about seven to eight grand. So this is an extremely expensive lens you're talking about now. And uh, so to, to support this camera, if you want to buy something that works straight out of the box, that means you need a couple of lenses minimum, maybe a wide angle 35 equivalent and a 50 to kind of start your journey. And you are still looking at buying you know, if you want Leica, that is. If you want Leica lenses, you're looking at minimum or just 10 grand on its own, just on lenses, before you even count this camera in. So altogether, you're looking at 12, 13 grand minimum just to get it started. <laughs> so, you know, of, of course, if you look at it, you know, it's still gonna be cheaper than Leica, but don't forget though, Leica also offer, are still offering the uh, the older model selling as the uh, the uh, the M240e version, which is the uh, using the older M240 body, basically rebadge it uh, as an older camera and uh, as a beginner level cameras, just like anybody else who's doing it, the same thing at the moment. So you can have that for around about the same money, and uh, it'd be second hand. You can also like buy second hand M camera as well. So if you you don't necessarily need to get this camera uh, to appreciate the uh, rangefinder uh, 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 photography. You can go and buy a second-hand uh, like a digital Leica M, whether it's gonna be an M9 or ME or gonna be M240, I'm pretty sure you can snap one up for about two to three grand these days on the street. And, uh, so you don't need to spend it. However, having said that, like I said, it's got a brand new technologies there. It's a totally new sensor, which is completely uh, 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 different to the traditional CMOS sensor you may have heard of, traditional different to the uh, 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 the leaf shutters on the on the on the uh, rangefinder cameras, uh, so not not leaf shutters, the the curtain shutters from the uh, M cameras. It's going to be electronic global shutter, which is a lot of people have been discussing and tout about this particular technology. So it will be interesting to see uh, how it works, you know, and how the images look like, especially what they talk about, you know, it's going to be high dynamic range. It's going to be something. You know, for any photographer, will be quite, uh, 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 you know, eye-opening. Yeah, that's how I would say it. So, good morning, and uh, Jason. Um, <laughs> oh, Jenny's here as well. Hello, Jenny. Good morning, and uh, welcome to join my live uh, stream. Hopefully, uh, this is my new style, and will be uh, quite interesting for many people, especially every day. It's going to be slightly different stuff. Tomorrow, it's going to be Tech Wednesday, by the way. So, uh, if you guys want to hear something uh, tech-related, some new gadgets, I have, a, I have a couple of things I want to show you guys. I've got one right here, so it's still in the wrap, yeah? So, I'm going to show you guys tomorrow. Uh, um, so, there are quite a few things I want to show you every week and uh, uh, you know, it could be anything, not just about photog photography, like I mentioned, because I do have photography related uh, stream day, which is Thursday and Friday. Thursday is going to be Olympus and then Friday is going to be general photography, uh, more about theories and more about uh, uh, mental preparedness, you know, how you become a better photographer, not just about buttons and settings on the camera, but more how you see the world differently. So this is going to be very interesting if you really want to improve your photography. Um, the Monday I would do a, a what we call the weekend photo review. So, uh, so I want to see some of your photos that you take over the weekend and some of the photos I took over the weekend. So it's just a little bit of fun thing on Monday just to catch up a little bit because I know everybody usually have the Monday blue, right? You know, so I would just want a little bit chill uh, a time for for Monday and just come out and you know wake up and have a look at the, the some of the photos that we took over the weekend. That'll be really interesting, right? And then Tuesday is like today. And it's the photography news. So this is the schedule. I'm, uh, I've really listed out on my on my personal uh, Facebook page. You can see the list there, and uh, I'm going to also list it in my YouTube channel. So you, you guys can also follow that as well. And the links is in this uh, video description. So you can go and check out my personal uh, page for all the archives, and also my Red Thirty Five Photography YouTube channel for the list, and also other development within the Michael Forster community. So I have everything covered. Everything. Oh, how good am I? I'm hardworking, man. I am hardworking, and. Uh, <laughs> And Peter, uh, I have a 50-inch 4K TV, and unless I'm about three, uh, three and three to four feet away, I cannot see the difference between 4K and HD. That is exactly what I mean. And uh, it, it, some, I think to a point that human eyes just cannot resolve or cannot see more details than it is. Sometimes I don't. I think that AK, you know, is definitely the future. But whether how, how or whether we will actually uh, be able to appreciate that higher definition, the extra details, is subject to 
uh, a different people's uh, a perception, you know, whether they can actually see things, you know, like I, I definitely probably can't see, and I think my 4K is really pretty sharp to be quite honest, because I'm not really sitting like a feet away from the camera to try and inspect in pixels. And uh, I'm sitting back to enjoy the experience, right? When you're watching a TV at home, you want really to sit back like five feet away, uh, uh, five, six feet away, you can enjoy the canvas. Uh, in that case, you, I don't think you actually see much more than, than, than that in, if you have a 50, 52, and even 60 inch. I think that um, a 4K for that is kind of like the optimal resolutions. So if you want to 8K, you, if you want to appreciate 8K, you need bigger, bigger cameras. You need like 80, 100, 120 inch uh, TV to be able to absorb the, 80, uh, the 8K resolutions. But it'll be interesting though, still interesting. And for a lot of production houses, you know, they uh, are other people who are tech savvy. They may want to adopt the 8K early on and, and do more things with it, such as, uh, uh, you know, crop in, crop out, whatever, you know, they, they, they can maintain the 4K res resolution if they want to punch in. Uh, digitally without having to use the zoom lens and you know a lot of youtubers does that for 1080 videos that they post on youtube using 4k and, and punching digitally basically cropping and uh, so that's what they do uh, but yeah it, it's it's interesting definitely our future is bright our future is bright i'm loving it and um and jason good morning good morning okay mark i will buy a digital om one n clone without a screen but will anybody pay three thousand pound for a rangefinder without a Nikon like a name on it. It's going to be a difficult sale, but as you can see, it's sold out. So uh, it's, it's going to be quite hard to say, uh, uh, you know, you just don't know uh, about this sort of thing. You know, Pixie is obviously a very, very different uh, um, uh, camera, but it's also a unique camera, so to speak. So there may be some sort of Leica affectionate who wants to collect all kinds of uh, uh, digital or rangefinder cameras in general. So this could be a collector piece for them. You say, oh, it's new, it's Leica compatible. It's, uh, it's something that looks different. You know, like I can be one of the few that actually own this camera in the crowd. You know, they, you know, those people always like that, you know, they, they want to be a little bit different. That's why they buy Leica in the first place. And especially those who collect limited edition of Leicas and uh, because they, they want to stand different in front of the crowd. And if they suddenly hold a pixie and tell you, they will gather a lot of attention within the Leica crowd, then that is for sure. So uh, this is one of the reasons why it sold out, I believe, because uh, I'm pretty sure those people who buy this camera uh, uh, already, uh, already order this camera are pure Leica fans. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I solely believe so that there are tons of them out there. Um, but anyway, it's no bad thing though. You know, this is another thing to push a new sensor technology out into the market. A global electronic shutter is something that we heard about and, uh, and discussed about, but haven't really seen one in action, so to speak. So uh, I'm quite curious to see this camera in action and it will be interesting to see whether, whether this uh, will be something um, that would propel the digital photography forward. As you know that we're still using a lot of the physical uh, shutter in all the digital cameras, whether it's going to be mirrorless or uh, uh, DSLRs. I know we have silent shooting, but the thing is that, uh, you know, because it's not global shutter, we're still relying on a, a digital progressive scan technologies, which means that you will get rolling shutter when you do videos. And if you use a uh, 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 silent shutting, sh sorry, silent, mode to shoot photos when you pan you will get rolling shutter regardless you are going to get that so global shutter will completely illuminate that, um, uh, uh, that problem because this entire uh, sensor being switched on or off at the same time so like you know it's gonna be really really interesting i can guarantee that so i i will wait i'll wait to see uh, how this thing is going to pan out and uh, i'm pretty sure this could be another bright future for digital photography so that's exciting news so hopefully you enjoy my news reading today and uh, I'm certainly getting a little bit excited about what's going on for these two particular news obviously for Michael Forth especially for Michael Forth developments since I am a Michael Forth uh, uh, shooter um, the sharp AK camera development is definitely very encouraging given that uh, all the uh, somehow uh, worrying news over the last couple of weeks and uh, so once again you know like uh, Sharp is uh, is known is a known corporate in Japan, and they also produce a lot of high end uh, video cameras in Japan, uh, same as uh, JVC and all the other ca uh, companies. So like they are all supporting Michael Four Third, and they all use Michael Four Third gears. So it'll be good to see someone pushing the envelope once again within the community. Uh, I know. 
Panasonic is relatively quiet in the development side and, and uh, because they are kind of focusing on the full frame stuff at the moment, but Olympus is still pushing. Olympus is still doing what they're doing as usual. Business as usual, that's how, that's how they put it, right? And I believe it. And I think that they, it's good to see Olympus is continue doing it. And now Sharp is definitely driving the technology forward by talking about the 8K stuff. And um, obviously nobody knows, like I said, uh, how much they are into the development. I'm pretty sure they have some working uh, form, you know, uh, of cameras uh, that is already uh, being tested at the moment. You know, it's still in prototype stage. That's why you don't see a proper image apart from the, uh, uh, let me just go back to that again, uh, just to show you guys uh, that once again. So this is definitely something to be excited about, you know, just looking at that, especially if you see that image there, you know, it's the Olympus 12 to 100 F4 Pro lens. <laughs> I still, I love that how they actually put that lens on and it's just really great, yeah. It makes me happy for some reason, it's just fun. Okay, and uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this news and uh, tomorrow is gonna to be Tech Wednesday. So if you want to come back here tomorrow and have a look at some of the stuff that I want to show you guys, I've got three boxes just arrived yesterday. And uh, so it'll be something um, uh, that I will share with you progressively uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, there's a lot to be excited about because a lot of the time now, as I, I told you my YouTube production has kind of slowed down a little bit because my kids are here full time. It's a little bit difficult for me to create uh, normal uh, YouTube videos because I do like to take time and make some high quality video for YouTube. Uh, but without having that physical time to you to do, uh, the next best thing for me to actually show you the product is via live streaming because uh, this is I can actually physically show you and you can ask me live questions uh, as and when uh, the stream is going. So like and hopefully this will give you a, another perspective uh, of uh, looking at something new. So hopefully uh, you guys will all enjoy it. So let's stay tuned for tomorrow. And also we'll post a new uh, Red35 live stream topics later on today so you know exactly what to expect tomorrow. I'm excited about tomorrow because uh, for the last few weeks, my live streaming has been extremely popular. So I hope to carry on that momentum. And if you guys are all welcome to join me tomorrow afternoon for my YouTube discussion. So in, that, in the meantime, I will say goodbye to all of you and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye for now and take care. Be safe.